What up guys, welcome to Death Wish Studios. Today we're going to be talking about some Dead Rising 2 3D versus non 3D. That way you guys can see the performance run on both. Also for last week's competition or sweepstakes, we're going to announce the winner at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. As always guys, we're going to go ahead and show you here what the settings are going to be set to. That way you guys can see and compare with your graphic settings on your PC. We're going to go down here to PC settings. Everything is set to max except for blur effects because Nvidia recommends that you turn blur effects on if you are off. If you turn it on, it's going to mess up the 3D effect. You only turn it on whenever you don't have 3D on. So everything else again set to max. Now we're going to go ahead and start a new game. That way we can start from the beginning and show you guys what this is 3D versus non 3D. Now the first thing we're going to look at here is 3D. As you can see, as always, the bottom right, we're going to have the frames per second and the top left is going to be the frames per second as well. But the bottom right is going to show you what the cards are doing, how much percentage are being used of each card and what the temperature is. Now 3D, the reason I picked Dead Rising 2 for a 3D comparison was because Dead Rising is not a very graphically intense game. However, it does have a lot of particles going on at once. You got a million zombies on screen at high resolutions with multi-sampling and that is going to take a chunk out of your video cards and your processor as well so right here we have the 980x coupled with the three 480 gtx's and this game runs beautifully with these cards and this processor as you can see right here with uh, 3d however you won't go over 60 frames per second because 3d will just cut your resolution your uh your hertz your refresh rate in half and that's what you're gonna get. The max you're gonna get with 3D is 60 frames per second. Some here you're gonna see sometimes it's gonna drop below 30 because it's just so much going on on screen at once. So now here is just, I skipped a whole bunch of intros and whatnot because that's just boring stuff you guys don't need. Here in a second, we're gonna go ahead and switch um, the from 3D to non 3D and that way you guys can make a comparison for that as well. Now, Dead Rising 2 is an awesome game. Uh, it's, it's, Dead Rising 1 was cool. This one you just can play co-op and things like that. So if any of you guys out there want to play with me, you can always look me up on Steam. Uh, in the description below is my Steam ID number that way, or ID name. That way you guys can get me there. Here's a transition from, non -3D, from 3D to non-3D. So I hope you guys enjoy that part. Now, I know everyone here is ready for the zombie apocalypse. If you're not, well then you're well behind the power curve. Dead Rising 2, what separates this from the first one is the fact that you can create just about any kind of weapon you could imagine on here. You can create a flamethrower and a water gun. You can create cards that just decimate people, or zombies for that matter. You can just create anything you, you put your mind to. My question to you guys is, what kind of weapon are you going to make to prepare for the zombie apocalypse? Are you going to make a gun that has lasers shooting out of it, like in uh, Call of the Dead or Black Ops Zombies? Are you going to make, uh, I don't know, a death machine? Oh, hell, I don't know, something. What kind of weapon will you make to prepare yourself for the zombie apocalypse? Leave comments in the section below and let everybody know what your imagination is all about. All right, guys. Well, this is uh, Dead Rising 2 3D versus non-3D comparison. In the next couple of seconds, you're going to see a side-by-side -side review of it. I'm going to go ahead and be quiet, and I'll be back after this little part right here.
All right, guys. Well, here's the 3D versus non-3D side-by-side -side comparison. Bottom right is the 3D version. Top left is the non-3D version. Again, if you're hitting 60 frames per second on the 3D side, it's because VSync is always on in 3D. And this game apparently doesn't like for me to turn VSync off because it's always on. Right here, you can tell the differences between frames because I hit just 60 frames per second on the top left whenever I was involved with those bunch of zombies. And I think I go as low as 20. Five uh, frames per second whenever there's a lot going on on screen in the 3D version. So if this overly helps somebody out there to make that jump between 3D to non 3D or whatever, and that way you guys can make a comparison and see, well, hey, is 3D game worth it? Like I said in Crisis 2 review, is it worth it? To me, it's not worth all the money you need to invest in order to get just a little bit of more out of your game. But hey, if you want to do it, then here's a comparison for it. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. At the top right corner is going to be, boom, right there. That is the winner for last week's Crisis 2 sweepstakes. So, congratulations, just let me know when you want the game sent to you. Alright guys, well, hope you enjoy the rest of this video. This is Deathwish signing out. Peace. Listen to me. You need to stay calm, okay? We need to get out of here. So hang on tight.